Jonathan Majors, I'm disappointed in you. I'm not canceling you, my brother. But don't you ever get on another magazine with no pink jacket and no damn leggings. They got you looking like you naked. Don't do that, brother. Don't let them effeminize you. You are an alpha male, Jonathan Majors. You are on the cover of Ebony magazine. They got you looking very effeminate in that woman's outfit, those stiletto boots. Don't do that no more, brother. Jonathan Majors, they want to compromise your masculinity, brother, because you are a strong masculine man. Don't let them compromise your masculinity. Black men, we have to stop letting the power structure compromise our masculinity. We have to stop letting the power structure compromise our masculinity. And we have to also stop letting the power structure define our masculinity. Not only do they compromise black masculinity, they define black masculinity. What do I mean? They have defined black masculinity as being a good athlete, a good entertainer, a good military man, or a repeat offender. Also, sexual bedroom prowess. They have locked black men into a definition of masculinity. They have locked black men into a definition of masculinity that promotes reckless sexuality. These are the five archetypes of black masculinity created by the white power structure. Reckless sexuality. If you're recklessly sexual, you are masculine. Slave plantation images of black masculinity. Slave plantation images of black masculinity. Sexual recklessness. Sexual recklessness. Military sacrifice. If you go to the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and you sacrifice your life, that's an archetype of black masculinity. Good football player, good basketball player, good baseball player, good MMA fight. In other words, if you're able to get your strength, your physical power exploited by white corporate America, that's a form of black masculinity. Look at that. To be exploited athletically is a form of black masculinity. Look at the contradiction. To be exploited athletically is a form of black masculinity. Look at the contradiction. Brothers and sisters, when are we going to organize and when are we going to institutionalize? The weaknesses of African people is we do not organize and we do not institutionalize. The weakness of African people, we do not organize and we do not institutionalize. We don't come together for anything relevant and we don't build institutions for anything relevant. We don't come together for anything relevant and we don't build institutions for anything relevant. We will march, we will play, we will vote, we will YouTube, we will TikTok, we will Instagram, we will party, we will celebrate, we will buy, we will enjoy ourselves, we will drink, we will club, we will watch the Super Bowl, the NBA Finals, we will get our master's degrees, we will get our doctorate degrees, we will open up our barbershops and open up our restaurants, but we will not organize and we will not institutionalize. We will not come together to fight the fights that need to be fought and we will not come together and use our money to build nothing. I don't want to hear another Negro bring up Black Wall Street. I don't want to hear another Negro bring up Black Wall Street. I don't want to hear another Negro bring up Black Wall Street again. I'm sick and tired of you Negroes talking about Black Wall Street, but you are not interested in building a Black Wall Street. Stop bringing up Tulsa, Oklahoma. Stop bringing up Tulsa, Oklahoma. Stop 
bringing up Rosewood, Florida. Stop bringing up Wilmington, North Carolina. Stop bringing up Charleston, South Carolina. If you're not going to build a black Wall Street, stop bringing it up. Tulsa was 102 years ago. 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 Do you realize we have more disposable income today? We have 20 times as much disposable income today than we had during Tulsa. We have 20 times the disposable income today than we had in Tulsa. We had 20 times, we have 20 times the disposable income today. More millionaires, more billionaires, but I'm not going to put it on them because I know they don't care. I'm not going to talk about the millionaires and the billionaires because I know they don't care. I'm not going to talk about the millionaires and the billionaires because I know they don't care. How many relevant institutions has Puffy Combs built for the black community? Zero. How many relevant institutions has LeBron James built for the black community? Zero. How many relevant institutions has Sean Carter built for the black community? Zero. How many relevant institutions has Tyler Perry built for the black community? Zero. How many relevant institutions has Bob Johnson built for the black community? Zero. So it's no need to talk about millionaires and billionaires because they don't care. The black millionaire and billionaire consider themselves a separate group. I'm talking about middle class blacks, working class blacks, college educated blacks. We don't do any more than the millionaires and billionaires do. So stop talking about millionaires and billionaires when you don't do nothing yourself. Stop talking about millionaires and billionaires when you don't do nothing yourself. Hospitals, banks, schools, supermarkets, manufacturing and distribution. Hospitals, banks, schools, supermarkets, manufacturing and distribution. Hospitals, banks, supermarkets, schools, manufacturing and distribution. When are we going to have that conversation? NAACP has the Image Awards. NAACP has the Image Awards. I want to ask a question to the NAACP. I want to ask a question to the NAACP. I want to ask a question of the NAACP. How do you have millions for the Image Awards, but we have unemployed black men in these streets? How do you have millions of dollars for an NAACP Image Awards when you have millions of unemployed black men, you have homeless black people living on the street, single mothers with children with no roof over their head, but you got millions of dollars for an NAACP image awards. Do we not have enough awards already? Do we not have enough awards? We got the Source Awards. We got the Soul Train Awards. We got the BET Awards. The Emmys, the Grammys, the AMAs, the MTVs. Why do we need an NAACP Image Awards? Why do we need that? No disrespect to anyone who has received an award. No disrespect to anyone who has received an award. But I'm speaking institutionally of the NAACP with all the problems black people have, how do you find time to waste millions on an award show? That's black people's problem. We keep on rewarding each other for not dealing with our real problems. That's black people's problem. We keep on rewarding each other for not dealing with our real problems. When are we gonna start rewarding people who tackle real problems? We wanna celebrate careers. 
I have no problem with you celebrating people who had a good career, but I want to celebrate people who are fighting for justice. You need an NAACP Justice Award, Street Warriors Award. Reward the people who are fighting for justice. I don't give a damn about how many points you scored in the NBA. I don't give a damn about how many albums you sold that went platinum. What are you doing to change the trajectory? What are you doing to change the trajectory? What are you doing to change the trajectory of black America? Because the trajectory right now, this is mathematics. This is political mathematics. Economic disorganization. Economic disorganization. Political exploitation equals racial extermination. This is mathematics. Let's look at the trajectory economic disorganization political exploitation by the democrats equals racial extermination we have to understand overstand and understand nothing changes until we change nothing changes until the consciousness of the african changes reparations ain't changing it no new laws ain't changing it Nothing's changing until we change the way we think. Change what we value. Change what we are willing to sacrifice. 